Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise to ask question 138, 2015, under my name to the Honourable Minister for Education, Heritage and Arts. But before that, Madam Speaker, I just wanted to add a little bit of music to the Attorney General's ears as well. Uh, the, 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 people, the People's Charter also said that the 1997 Constitution was supreme. I'll give will, you 30 they, seconds, 30 seconds. Will the Minister inform the House if Government will consider converting all loans under TELS to grants given scarcity of employment for our graduates and would-be graduates? Thank you. I now give the floor to the Honourable Minister for Education, Heritage and Arts. Madam Speaker, uh, I think uh, it's a bad day for the Honourable Leader today. Again, he has messed up. Madam Speaker, I can't figure out what his conversion of loans to scholarship to do with creating employment in this scenario. <laughs> Madam Speaker, to the contrary, <laughs> well, oh, 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 Madam Speaker, <laughs> Madam, Madam Speaker, <laughs> This is, this is again, Madam Speaker, they don't have correct and full information. They're commenting that they have, don't have jobs, how can they pay? They don't have jobs, they don't have to pay, Madam Speaker. Unless and until they get jobs, they have to live, then they'll pay. But let me, let me give full details to the other side so that they won't ask this kind of questions again. Ma ma no, 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 Madam Speaker. To the country, tell students have more flexibility to move to global labor market because if they wish to migrate without saving the bond period, they only have to pay 150% of their loan, whereas the toppers have to pay 200%. I'll tell you why. Toppers, because they are taking someone else's place. There are a limited number of topper scholarships. So they have to pay double if they want to break their bond and want to migrate. Tells, anyone can get tells as long as they get admission requirements and they meet the uh, entry requirements. Madam Speaker, today 3% of TEL students have paid back and migrated. So to the contrary, it's better to be in TELS if they want to have flexibility in terms of moving to different labor markets. Madam Speaker, TOPAS, not a single student have left because TOPAS has been designed to address the employment labor market requirement of Fiji. Yeah. These are the areas where toppers are given. For example, survey, planning, valuation, engineers. These are the areas where toppers are being given in larger numbers because we are addressing Fiji's labor market requirement. Madam Speaker, again on TELS. The reason the tertiary education loan scheme is an initiative undertaken by the Banemarama government to ensure that no young person should be left behind even at the tertiary level. No student would be pre prevented from reaching their dreams because they cannot afford to. Fiji is implementing this initiative along with other countries, I'll tell you Madam Speaker who they are, who feel that this opportunity must be provided to remove barriers to higher education. Madam Speaker, the group of eight Australia through the Commonwealth Government's Higher Education Loan Program provides income contingent loans to Australian students enrolling in eligible universities, university courses. These loans remove barriers to participation in higher education and require repayment only once an individual income reaches an income threshold. Help aligns the cost of higher education with benefactors. According to the organization, the alignment of public and private cost with private, public and private benefits lays the foundation for an efficient and physically prudent higher education funding regime. In the absence of a government-supported student loan scheme, students who need to pay a tuition fee upfront. This would likely would preclude many students from participating in higher education. Madam Speaker, similarly, the New Zealand government is also implementing this initiative through its student loan scheme under the conjoint efforts of its Ministry of Social Development, Ministry of Education, and the Inland Revenue. The overall aim of the student loan scheme in New Zealand is to enable a wide range of people to access high quality tertiary education to gain qualifications. Madam Speaker, according to a study, for the information of honorable members on the other side, by Maureen Hoodall titled Student Loans in Developing Countries, Students' loans have been widely advocated as a way of financing private cost of investing in higher education. And more than 50 countries now have loan scheme which enable students to borrow from government agencies or commercial banks in order to finance the tuition fee or living expense. Let me give the names of these countries. Singapore, Colombia, India, Sweden, 
Denmark, USA, Netherlands, China, Japan, Hong Kong, Nigeria, Kenya, Ghana, Botswana, listen, listen, Botswana, Uganda, Zimbabwe, England, Germany, Korea, Malaysia, Lesotho, Malawi. Madam Speaker, we on the other side of this house do not wish to engage in irresponsible policy making. We exercise physical prudence at every point in time. Naga, thank you. Supplementary question, Honorable William I thank the Minister for. Uh, Right. <laughs> For confusing the House. <laughs> Madam Speaker, I have, here, I have here a report from the Minister of Education replying to the question by the Honorable Salat saying that in 2014, 345 proper scholarships were given at the value of $5.3 million. 345 scholarships, Madam Speaker, which is free. But going back to Ratu Mara's government, Rambuka, Chaudhary, and Garase, they used to give 600. They used to give 600. 300 for the Itoke, 300 for the others, plus the PSC and all that. Is it only 345, but it used to be 600 or more? Is it only 345? Thank you. I take it that your question is relating to the Topaz program? Yeah, they gave 345 last year, according to his reports, in reply to Salat Ron, uh, Honorable Salat Randonro. Question is, is that all the Mbani Marama government can do, 345, when it used to be 600 plus? Thank you, but the question is addressing the TELS program. The question is addressing the TELS program and not the TOPAS program. The onus is on the minister to uh, reply I, to that. I have question. here the breakdown of the, of the toppers. He's a big boy. He's a big boy. I'll give the honourable member full information. 2014, 345 topper scholarships were given. This year, 489 new was given, plus the 345 who are continuing. A total of 834 topper students are continuing. Madam Speaker, for your information, for your information, I have more. Thank you. We will give the uh, floor to the Honorable Bill Mandarsi. Thank you, Madam. How are the students take up rate for TELS and TOPAS? Thank you, Honorable. Thank you, Honorable Minister for Education. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And I want to thank my colleague, uh, Honorable Banminder Singh, for asking that. Let me repeat the top us one, and I'll go into the tells one. Again, last year, 345 were given in, uh, for toppers. The reason being that these were the ones who applied for the designated areas under toppers. Therefore, we didn't want to give, you know, in areas where we got excessive number of uh, graduates in town. This year, We've got 489 new under toppers and 345 are continuing, a total of 834 under toppers now, currently. But as Speaker for TELS, last year we had 5,316 students who were under TELS. This year we've got 4,545 new under TELS mm -hmm. and continuing 5262, a total of 9,807 under TELS. So a total of 12,806 now undertaking through toppers and tells. Uh, and Madam Speaker, we have now under the, the total also we have got overseas scholarships, the continuing PSC scholarships, the continuing Itoke uh, scholarships, continuing uh, the students under Donna, Cuba scholarship, uh, scholarship to Morocco as well, Moroccan government scholarship. So a total of the continuing students, we've got 9,408 and the new one, 14,177, a total of, in this year, 23,585 students studying yes. under various scholarships and loan schemes in Fiji. Thank you. Thank you. I will uh, give the floor to the Honorable Prem Singh. Thank you, Madam Speaker. A supplementary question. An advertisement appeared in the Fiji Sun on Saturday, July 4th. And by way of advertisement, the TELS board has put conditions of immigration watch list. 
foretells recipients and the guarantors. I understand from the Minister's previous statements that now guarantors are not required and they can do by way of a statutory declaration signed by a JP or a Commissioner of Votes or a solicitor. Question. Okay, now let me give a background of this. Question, the question is, the, Madam Speaker, this is for the other side to understand the question, Madam. The advertisement, the advertisement specifically states that there are six type of actions which the department can take, the TELS board can take. Isn't this in breach of the constitution? Thank you. <coughs> Point of order. Four, two, three of the standing order clearly states that a question must not be excessive in length and it must not contain more than one subject. Can we ask the honourable member to be specific and raise the question? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please, uh, honourable members, just be mindful of... Yes, madam, just following from the advertisement, isn't this action in breach of the Constitution? Honourable Section 9 and 21. Can you just repeat the question, please? The question I was in... Trying to, I was trying to give a background to this. No, no, no. The question is, madam... specific with the question. The Tax Board has now published an advertisement in the Fiji Sun on the 4th of July that there are measures that will take, about five or six measures they can take against an individual recipient and the guarantors. Now, will the minister explain to this house all these actions that will be taken, whether they are in breach of the constitution, particularly section 9 and section 21, and what will happen to the JP who witnesses? Will he also be liable? Thank you. Honorable clearly state that the supplementary question must be related to the subject matter of the substantive question. It is not related to the substantive question, Madam Speaker. It talks about whether it's constitutional or not. Where is the constitution meant in the substantive question? It's not mentioned in the substantive question, Madam Speaker. Thank you. We, we do agree that the issue that has just been raised is not really in the in the uh, substantive question as has been uh, highlighted. Uh, please, honorable members, just, be, uh, just ensure that we focus your question on the, the issue at hand. Um, we will now give the, uh, uh, the... Point of order, Madam Speaker. Point of order. I think the point of order from the Attorney General is actually out of order because the question, question talks about whether the loans will be converted to grants if they are not able to get a job, which means payment. And here is an advertisement in the Fiji Sun which lays down the condition that if the recipients do not pay, then these are the actions. And so the question is very, very relevant, Madam Speaker. It's a very relevant question. Thank you. The point of order has been raised. The onus is now on the minister if he wants to reply to that question or not. About brief of breach of constitution, Attorney General will answer when the member uh, asks the question to the Attorney General. But Madam Speaker, I just want to make a comment that Honorable Member Biman Prasad is not able to understand the advertisement. The advertisement says that if you migrate without Paying the loan. It's about paying. No, 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 no. So, unfortunately, unfortunately, Madam Speaker. Order, please. Um, unfortunately, members on the other side can't understand advertisements, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next uh, supplementary question, I will uh, give the floor to the Honorable Karabaki. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Given, Madam Speaker, that the recipients of the TELS uh, would be required to pay the money uh, provided for them for their education, and also given that, that the government is not prepared to convert all those loans to grant, will the government or will the minister consider 
allowing the recipients of TELS, when there is no employment available in Fiji, to remove that policy of restricting their movement and allow them to seek for employment in the employment markets overseas? Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Honorable Minister, you have the floor. Madam Speaker, the guarantors must undertake the, that if should in the case of the student not paying back when the person is migrated, the guarantor will pay. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. I now give the floor to the Honorable Nico Noekula. Well, Madam Speaker, as always, the Honorable Minister has not answered the question. So what is your question, please, Honorable Member? And he has gone all this diatribe to confuse us. The question is very simple. The question is very simple. Do not compare us your question, Korea. please. The question is this. Given that you cannot guarantee you cannot guarantee employment, can you review and can you review can you review this uh, the, the, the scholarship details as a grant? Because you cannot those other countries they can guarantee employment. You cannot guarantee employment here in Fiji. Thank you. Thank you. The question is clear. I will now give the floor to the Honorable Minister. Madam Speaker, again, the, the thing is this, when they graduate, until such time they get a job, they don't have to pay. I hope they, they understand this basic, simple, simple, simple English. Number two, number two, if they want to go overseas to different labor market, someone has to guarantee that if the person does not honor the deal, then the guarantor will pay. The person can go. Thank you. Simple. Simple. Thank you. Simple. We will now move on. No conversion of loans into grants. Thank, Thank you. you.